Hello, Shadowcat back, and this time is the last time for Hammer Ting. I know, it's been an emotional ride, but unfortunately, the ride's over. Because the month is over. That being said, however, we're leaving on a bang. Kinda. Actually, well, very small bang, if you can call it a bang at all. So, some things that I learned. I spent about two hours here after the last, uh, the last session. Just doing selling and, and crafting and stuff like that. One mistake that I made is I accidentally sold a whole bunch of gems. So the Star of Mara, uh, yeah, that, that might take a bit longer. Don't, don't worry though, it, it'll be okay. However, in the couple hours that I spent doing trading, which really was just crafting and selling, Number one, I found out that my sources of metal are not nearly as infinite as I thought they were. Like, uh, adamantine? Yeah. We're still getting it out, but I have completely decimated my stockpile. And even, where was it? Up here? Somewhere? Yeah. Even mithril. Which this thing was full? Yeah, mithril, completely gone. Over here, silver, wiped out. I have just, I, I decimated everything. It hasn't been bad, though. I mean, we, we still got lots of heavy metal. I don't think anyone's actually using it, but we still have some. Either way, though, I've been doing a lot of selling. And even though I did a lot of selling, we only have... 131 gold. And even then, it's not exactly represented because that 8 gold that we had before is still missing. So, I don't understand it. But, that's not even 1% of what this vault will hold. I mean, 50,000 gold. And it took me 2 hours just to get 125. We had to face facts. This thing is not getting filled. I, we, we achieved the actual event of making it. Which was hard enough. But we're not filling it. So, I'm sorry, but it's just not going to happen. And it's kind of a shame because I really do wonder what it would look like if it was all filled in. I have to imagine that this entire floor would be filled with treasure. And maybe there'd be like torches lit or something. And I wonder what would go on this great big pedestal in the middle. Because I can just picture the Star of Mara sitting right there. A shining beacon. Speaking of the Star of Mara, though. Over here, like I said, I accidentally sold a lot of gems. And so, we, we don't have a whole lot of raw anything anymore. We have some. But, I mean, there's rough, there's raw. There's a mixture of all kinds of gems in here. And it's slowly getting worked on. Over here, however, we do have one good thing. So while I don't have a whole lot of brilliant gems, we do have three brilliant emeralds. And that should be enough to make one star of Mara. Let's do it. I right, This has got to be the capstone for everything. Everything that we've done, everything that we've been working for. This is it. Is it a momentous occasion? Eh, kinda. Is it going to be some kind of spectacle? Absolutely not. Especially if no one actually comes by to do it. Is anyone actually going to do it? Well, they moved all the brilliant gems into the inventory. So, I'm hoping? Wait, is he doing it? Is he doing it? Yes, he is. We are finally going to have our Star of Mara. I don't know if we get an achievement, or if it do something, but I get the feeling it probably doesn't do anything. Closer, closer. Done! Star of Mara, Emerald. We did it! We did it! Okay, we did it. So, the, the pinnacle of everything. We built the Star of Mara. All right, episode's over. Go home. No, I'm kidding. It's not over yet. I mean, I could because, well, 
if we got the Star of Mara. It's worth almost 10 gold. So, let's see, 10 gold at 50,000. If we made 5,000 Stars of Mara, we could fill the vault. It took this long to get one. Yeah, so that's not happening. Instead, though, um, I want to focus on this and try to get this done. Because, like, this is one of the first things that we've ever had, and I don't know why we can't do it. Crab broth requires crab shells. Algae pancakes require algae. There's a problem, though. There are people out there that have algae. And for some reason, even though I've ordered it, or ordered them to buy it, they won't sell it to us. And I don't know why. Nothing about this makes sense. Because we have done so much trading with them. So, like, it says on here that we need to be level 5. Level 5 what? Do I need a level 5 chef? Because I'm pretty sure I do. You're a cook. What's your cooking at? Level 31. So that's not the problem. Is it because I need to have level 5 trading? Well, my trade level is at 22. So, also not a problem. I don't get it. And a crab shell? Forget about it. I haven't seen one. And I did a little bit more exploring, just looking to see what I can find. We found another abandoned graveyard. Uh, I thought we found a rat hole around here, too, somewhere. Did we? Yeah, we found another rat hole, too. So at this point, we're just kind of gathering money and resources and just trying to get by. So that'll send them out to do a little bit more trading. It'll bring us a little bit more gold, but we're, we're never going to hit the 50,000. I'm sorry. Uh, some other things that I do want to do, I want to take care of this. This has been sitting here forever, and honestly, it's kind of bothering me. So we are going to go ahead and do that. Now, there's already a path up here. So all we really have to do is just make a pathway down and we'll be able to take care of that, that mushroom village place. And we'll also get some more booty out of this. And who doesn't love booty? So we're going to go ahead and make a scaffold down. And I just sent most of the dwarves out on uh, trade missions. Yeah, I mean, look at all of them. They're everywhere! And I don't know if this is the biggest the map gets, because all the trading that I've done, I haven't uncovered anything else. I, the map can't be infinite, obviously, and eventually the pathways would be so big that it would just be unmanageable. So I don't know what else to expect there. In the meantime, though, we'll, we'll let them do things down here and see who wants to get to work. Alright, so I gave everyone the chance to go out, do their trading, get home. And I thought that maybe somebody would come down here and do this, but apparently no one is interested. Kind of disappointing. But I guess I don't blame them too much. I mean, why would they? Really, why, why would they care? <laughs> it's fine, though. Honestly, it's not one of those things that really matters. I will say this, though, about Hammerting, since, you know, this is the last time I'll be sharing this with you. And really... I, I do insist that you go pick it up, because this is a fantastic game with a lot of promise. It is still in early access, and that shows. And honestly, if they were to abandon the game right now, and just say, oh, it's done, it wouldn't be bad, but it would be severely disappointing. The fact is, there is a lot of good in this game. It is, first off, incredibly fun. Just the fact of building your mountain home, exploring the mountain, making railways, the actual building part of it is incredibly fun. And when you're playing a colony builder like this, that's the important part. I mean, if you're not having fun building the colony, then you're going to hate the rest of the game because, like, everything is predicated on that. There are some things, however, that do show definite early access syndrome. For example... Remember how the uh, skeletons broke this place last time? Yeah, the fact is, you can break these buildings all you want. While I was trading, I had a couple of other buildings get broken. And I think this has been broken a couple of times. Breaking the buildings literally does nothing. They're not destroyed, they're not disabled, nothing happens. The same thing goes with the dwarves. I mean, uh, who was it? It was, uh, you, Yulva who needs to level up, actually. You were trapped in lava. You should be dead. 
Wisdom, highest stat. Yeah, well, did, no. Obviously, your robustness should be higher, because you were sleeping in lava. So, as far as I can tell, the dwarves, they can't die. Which is not a bad thing. I guess, kinda? I mean, it does take away a little bit from the realism, but then again, it is a fantasy colony builder. And you're under attack? Ah, I see they were swarming the stairs again. Oh, are you gonna go up and actually work on those scaffolds? Fantastic. The work system in here, um, it's a little bit confusing. Up here is the job broker. And this shows you what every dwarf is doing, and we literally did nothing with this. Was that a problem? No, not really. I can't honestly tell what the point of all this is. You can disable certain jobs for certain people, but a lot of that is disabled just by the tools they're using. I, For example, if you don't have a ladle or a cleaver, you're not cooking. Period. You're just not. Same thing for the whitesmith. If you don't have a whitesmith's hammer, yeah, these guys, then you're you're not doing it. Other than that, everything's kind of generic. Everyone has a pickaxe. Everyone has a weapon of some kind. So the job broker just seems kind of superfluous. At least for the time being. Again, it's not a bad thing because everything right now kind of works. Now... My main game is RimWorld, and in RimWorld, the job allocation is really, really super important. Because if you don't allocate jobs the right way, then food doesn't get grown, and, you know, buildings don't get built, and people will just eventually die. But again, here, no one can die. There's almost no consequences for any of your actions. Then again... Early access. That's something that might change in the future. Some things could use better explanations. Like the wall or the uh, the fluid source. The wall fluid source. Kinda kinda wish there would have been like a tool tip or like if I if if I hover over something. Okay? This says empty in the frozen waste. Alright, that's fine. If I come down here. This is a jackpot mine, and it tells me right down there in the bottom corner. That's good. But if I come down here, this is nothing. This literally says nothing. That is basalt in the fiery underworld. That is doomstone in the fiery underworld. This is nothing. Okay. Had this actually had a tooltip on it, it would not have taken me 15 episodes to figure that out. It's fine, though. I mean, of all the worst things to happen. What I think is a real tragedy is things like this. God of the Forge. I can't do anything with this. For the amount of effort it took me to get down here and, and find this, this should do something. I mean, God of the Forge surrounded by lava. This should be like a smithy with like infinite fuel. Or a bonus to, to critical success. Not that I've seen critical success or failure really matter that much. But I also haven't been paying that much attention to the crafting. I don't know if, you, if items even have quality. Do they have quality? No, not here. Uh, actually, no. Let me look at what people are actually carry. Uh, curved Farmer's Copper Fortine Rake. Doesn't say anything about quality on it. Uh, Basket Gladiator's Mithril Kopesh Sword. And again, no thing on that. See, I don't understand what um, the critical success and critical... Well, critical failure just means that you, like, failed to do it. But critical success on a crafting check? I don't know. I don't know. Or at least I don't know what it means, and therefore I feel like I should have been told what it means. And maybe I was, but it, it wasn't as prominent as it could have been. And in RimWorld, again, and, and I, I hate to compare it, but, like, it is my favorite game, and it's my favorite game for a reason. Everything that's crafted has a quality to it. It can be awful, poor, normal, good, excellent, masterwork, or legendary. And the quality of an item actually reflects how useful it is. So you want to make sure that your good crafters are doing the crafting, and your poor crafters actually keep their, their slimy mitts off of the crafting. 
I hope you're not going to go fight them all by yourself. Oh, you're going to go fight them all by yourself. This could end up poorly for you. Uh, nope, never mind. <laughs> never mind. What are you carrying? A straight gladiator's heavy metal sea sword. Okay. Yeah, you're just laying waste to fungus left and right. And you've got help coming, so yeah, you got this. Again, not that I really need to worry because they can't die. They just fall unconscious until someone revives them. I mean, that was good to know, but kind of takes some of the, uh, some of the thrill out of the game. Wait, another one? Another one. Okay. Well, I mean, we're already down here. We're already working on this stuff. Can we just, like, extend this? So we're just going to extend this all the way down here like that. And we'll take out uh, more fungus. Anyway, where was I? Yeah, this game... I think is um, is good, but it has the potential to be amazing. And one of the things that they have been very explicit about when advertising the game is that it is moddable. Now, I haven't seen any mods for it yet, but I haven't gone looking too hard. There is no Steam Workshop page for this game yet, and I, I don't know where else to look for them, honestly. Aside from doing a Google search and finding out that way. I do think that if it is as moddable as they say, and I have no reason to believe that it wouldn't be, this game could be improved so much through mods. I mean, I'm thinking of all the different kind of dwarves, you could do everything from Lord of the Rings dwarves to the space dwarves that made Thor's hammer. I, why not? I, if you can do mods for the game, you could even mod the mountain change it, make it into like an asteroid or something. Of course, then I think you'd be kind of treading on oxygen not included territory, but hey, why not? Oxygen not included doesn't have dwarves. And if we don't do it, who will? And I was kind of hoping as I was exploring that I might come across a crab somewhere. But every crab that I've found so far has given me crab meat, but no crab shell. And a crab shell is not something I can buy. I tried. So if I come over here to buy... Uh, hide, lumber, no, 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 just, you, you can't buy it. I don't know where you get it. And spider legs seem to have absolutely no use except to just sell them. Which is another thing that I wanted to point out. Like, there's so many things in the game that either don't have uses or simply don't seem to exist. Like, the algae. I don't know why... We're not buying any algae. But I mean, here's some sea algae from these guys. I mean, if I order it from everyone, is there a chance that maybe I might get it from one of them? Let's find out. Okay, so I put in orders for algae from everyone who's selling it. So let's make sure that we go through and actually do a little bit of selling ourselves. I know, this is terribly exciting. The adventures of trade. I mean, if you're going to be doing this, you could just go pay, uh, play Death Stranding. Then at least you get to run across wastelands and dodge space aliens and carry a crying baby and whatever else comes out of Kojima's fever dreams. And I'm guessing that that just took everyone out of the mountain home on trade missions. Uh, more or less. And we probably could have gotten a lot more dwarves along the way, but the 15 that we've got really did a lot of work. And while more dwarves would, of course, be amazing because everything is uh, merrier with more dwarves, I don't see a whole lot of benefit, except that maybe you could get a lot more crafting done, a lot more mining done. As it stands, though, yeah, I mean, we, we did good with what we had. So that's going to bring back some more, and is anyone going to make algae pancakes? Please? So, I mean, things that we're missing. Slime, slime, da 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 Missing crab shell. You know what it says we're not missing? It says we're not missing algae. Wait, there is... There is algae in here. Why do we not have algae for pancakes? Why do we not have algae pancakes? Requires one great sea algae, one flower... Do we have flour? Uh, we do not have flour right now, but we can get flour, can't we? Farm. 
flower? Maybe? Oh, it's right there. Do we not... Do we not have gloom flower? Is that why? Have I been the mistake this entire time? Okay. Make some flour. Okay, there's more flour. It's on the way. It just hasn't gotten there yet. They're working on it. They're working on delivering a lot of things here. Okay, and we got the gloom flour. Now someone should come make flour, right? Or, you know, some of this stuff at least? Okay, yeah, you're cooking. Yulva. You know, I see how you could stand to, uh, to sleep in the lava now. You've been working in the kitchen. You know how they say if you can't stand the heat, get out of the, the uh, kitchen? Well, obviously there's a reason why you're in the kitchen. Okay, and... Algae pancakes! We did it! We did it! Okay, so that's like one more thing checked off the list. All right, we're never going to fill the vault, but we, we at least got algae pancakes. It's only taken us 16 episodes to do it. The crab broth, however, I think is a complete lost cause. I mean, I don't know where we get crab shells. I don't know how we get crab shells. I've killed crabs. They didn't give shells. One last thing to do, however, and maybe we'll get lucky on this one. I think it's time we go up. So, the last thing to do before we leave. We need to go up. Because I've been curious. So, I want you to go up. I want you to come over. We spent all of our time going down. Now it's time to go up. Because I want to see what's up here. My curiosity will eventually be my downfall, but it will not be this day. And if I do find a crab up here, I'm going to cry. Like, legitimately cry in front of everyone. All right, we're getting our first look. What's up here? A tiny little cavern. Yeah, that was, that was worth our time. Uh, not that I really expected much more. But now we can continue building upwards. All right, everyone is so very busy up here that we're not getting a lot of work done in these staircases going up. I did, however, notice something down here, though. So I set up a couple more bills. We don't have any rubies, and I never found a source for rubies. I don't know where you get them. But we do have sources for sapphires, emeralds, and diamonds, and so I have set up a Star of Mara for each one of those. And currently... We have an Emerald Star of Mara, and we have a Diamond Star of Mara. The Diamond one is 14 gold. However, we don't have a Sapphire one yet. And I'd be lying if I said that I, I wanted to leave here without having at least one of each. Can we get that? I don't know. I'm already running long on time, but I think that we can do this. I mean, I did set up a drill down here somewhere. Or no, I just have this one, I think. And this one is getting both silver and sapphires. I don't think I have a proper sapphire drill yet. Yeah, this one is also getting sapphires. Whereas down here, I actually stripped away all the iron. So this one is just doing diamonds. And still iron? I thought I cleaned all that up. Oh well. I mean, worse things have happened. No one is terribly interested in doing this, but, you know, I hardly blame them. Right now, everyone is just busy doing a lot of crafting because, well, we've been selling a lot of stuff. However, we are only one brilliant sapphire away from a Star of Mara. I think we can do it, actually. We just need more sapphires. I just don't know where we can necessarily get more sapphires. Sapphires. Actually, you know what we could do? What if we had just, like, bulk sapphires? Oh, I'm having an idea. I'm having an idea. Sapphires are not too hard to come by. We have seen them in other places. Where else have we seen sapphires? Instead of waiting on a drill to mine them out, what if we just mine them out by hand? So this is all mithril. That's all mithril. This will work. So we already have access to this. All we have to do is just kind of get up there. And here's more sapphires down here. So here's what I'm going to do. 
Here's my plan. Starting here. We're going to come down like this. And we're going to go up as well. Right there. We go up. And from there, we'll go over. And this will allow us to mine out all the sapphires here. We build these scaffolds, we go, we mine the sapphires, we get a huge influx right off the bat, and that should let us complete the Star of Mara. Now I kind of wish I would have put a, a rail station over here, and you're going to end up stuck down here. Oh, no, you're not. Okay, that's good. And once, ever, or once we do have it down here, I want this all mined out. Same thing goes for up here. We're going to get so many sapphires. And I just found more sapphires in a wall. I saw a hint of them, so I decided to dig away the stone. And just like that, more sapphires. Oh, we're going to have so many sapphires. Okay, we need to dig more of this out. We got to dig more of this out. Come on, dwarves. We're doing some digging. Look at the number of sapphires he's got. He's got almost a full, a full bag of raw sapphires. What are we working on over here? <gasps> You're working on another brilliant gem. That's good. This is an emerald brilliant gem. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. And no one has come up here to do this yet. I wonder why. Perhaps because I can't reach it that way? I don't know. We'll find out. We'll see what that does. In the meantime, how are we doing on our sapphire excavation? So many sapphires. Go ahead and mine all of that out. We're getting that sapphire star. It will be the last thing we do. Okay, we are turning so many sapphires into gems now. It's kind of crazy. So, sapphires into rough gems, rough gems into capuchin gems, to trillions, to brilliants, to stars. We're gonna do this. We have plenty of rough sapphires. Oh, now we're getting cabochons. So that's one, two, and three. Okay, three cabochon gems. That should give us a trilliant. Yes, it do. Now we need more. We need more. And when you think about it, it's kind of crazy because one Star of Mara requires three brilliance. Three brilliance requires three trillions, three trillions, and so on and so forth. So that means that one Star of Mara requires three, nine, twenty-seven, uh, twenty-seven times three. Well, my mind is blanking. Eighty-one? No. Wait. Maybe? No. 60 plus 20... Yeah, 81. And I think that needs to be tr or times 3 again, because I think that's only the rough gems, so that's... It's a lot of sapphires. Leave it at that. It's a lot of sapphires. And now I have an entire carpet of copper ore that I'm never going to use for anything. At least I hope we don't use it for anything. Oh, and we need another scaffold here, too, so they can go down. I don't know what happened to that one. Oh, but he can get close enough to start mining. Right now he's just mining copper, though. I mean, he is a dwarf, though. He has short little arms. I'm not going to hold it against him. Okay, we're ready. We have another brilliant gem. So, I'm going to unpause this. And this should give us our last star of Mara. The last one that we can possibly do because I cannot find rubies anywhere. All we need is for someone to come in and do it. Is it going to be you? Linne? I do believe it is. Yes! Yes! And that did it. Right there. Sapphire Star of Mara. Nine gold. The Emerald, also nine gold. And a diamond one at 14. Our three stars. You know what? I think that's an accomplishment worthy enough of leaving this series on. So, again, as I said earlier, I think this is a fantastic game. I think you should pick it up. 
If they stopped working on it now, it would be disappointing, but it would still be fun to play on occasion, and if they do keep working on it, and especially if they get mod support, this will be a game for the ages. I, I cannot express that enough. If it fulfills its potential, it will be superb. So, that's my recommendation. Go get Hammerting. You won't regret it. And besides that, right now you can get Hammer Tink from the Humble Bundle, and it's for a good cause, and that's never a reason to regret anything. With that being said, though, it's time for me to go. This episode has gone long, and there's not much more we can do. The only thing left to do would be to fill the vault and find mysteriously missing crab shells, which may not even be possible. So, all of that done, I want to thank you for sticking with me throughout this entire series, Thank you for everyone who wanted to be a dwarf. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing. And whatever comes up in humble August, I will see you there next time. And until then, take care.